Brian Stevenson once said, we cannot heal the deep wounds inflicted during the era of racial terrorism until we tell the truth about it. In my own words, this quote means we cannot progress as a society to put an end to racial injustice without understanding the existence of it, past, present, and future. Without the realization of this problem, it will continue to occur. Brian Stevenson is a lawyer who founded the Equal Justice Initiative to challenge racial bias and inequity in the U.S. justice system. As he challenged the U.S. justice system, I'd like to challenge you all to educate yourself on the diverse topics of white privilege and racial inequalities. I first read this quote in my history class at a private school with a majority white population known as Beaver Country Day School. We were learning about the Reconstruction era after the Civil War. This quote resonated with me because prior to coming to Beaver, I attended Stoughton High School, a public, more diverse school, but one that glossed over the topic of discrimination in history class. No one questioned it. After transitioning to the private school, which was indeed a predominantly white institution, also referred to as a PWI, racial discrimination is talked about. That doesn't mean it is actually understood. My new, more privileged school, talking about racial discrimination, is a way for it to use its privilege of being a predominantly white institution as a vehicle to help uplift BIPOC voices, taking a positive advantage of their white privilege for change. Earlier this month, I sent out a Google form to the students of my high school. I had 50 responses. 80.4% of students who fill out this form were white, 7.8% were black, 5.9% were biracial, and another 5.9% were Hispanic or Latino. When asked, do you know or understand what white privilege is? 90.2% said yes, 7.8% said kind of, and 2% said, I believe so, but I always try to continue to educate myself. When asked to define what white privilege was, some definitions were, white privilege is when white people are given more opportunities than people of color because of their skin color. White privilege is something that white people are born with that already gives them an extra hand in the world. No matter what other things that white person is struggling with, they're always going to have that white privilege. White privilege is when someone of the white race is wrongly looked up to and thinks they are superior over other races. These are the right ideas, but it doesn't matter your social or financial status. It doesn't matter where you come from or get your education. All that matters is that you are white, you will always be white, you can't help that fact, and that is your privilege. White privilege can be defined as the inherent advantages possessed by a white person on the basis of their race in a society characterized by racial inequality and injustice. In simpler terms, it is the fact that white people aren't judged or discriminated against by the color of their skin. Before I continue, I'd like to emphasize that white privilege is not a bad thing. It is what you do with that privilege that can characterize it as good or bad. In an article I read called The White Privilege Unpacking the Knapsack by Peggy McIntosh, examples of white privilege that may not be as apparent are being able to move anywhere and be almost certain that your neighbors will be neutral towards you. Whenever you watch a TV show or a movie, your race being widely represented. And the fact that you won't have to educate your children about being aware of the systematic racism for their own daily physical protection. Also on the form, when asked, how do you feel about going to a PWI? Most people said they felt fine or sheltered, but some students add their own answers and admitted that they felt fine because they happened to be one of the white students in this institution. Some other adjectives that were used were conflicted, confused, overwhelmed, silenced, and a small amount said that they wanted to be educated. Just accepting and acknowledging this to be, having a willingness to become educated, it is exactly what is needed to become a more progressive institution in a later society. The last question I asked on the Google form was, have you witnessed or fallen victim of racial discrimination at Beaver? 47.1% said no, 43.1% said yes, 
and 9.8% said, I think so. Here are some anonymous confessions and stories that were shared with me. I have been subject to more than a couple microaggressions that stemmed from ignorant questions about Latino culture and a friend of mine who was black was compared to a monkey by another student who wasn't expelled. In the class, learning about racism in the 50s and 60s, a student said, those black people look like your parents, to me as well as other black students. I've also experienced and witnessed white people trying to touch black people's hair. I've seen students of color's opinions not be as validated as white students. I've also seen teachers expect to the person of color to have something to say or add input into a conversation just because it's about race. This quote actually came from a faculty member. As a white faculty member, I've witnessed often secondhand accounts of racial discrimination that far too many of our students of color have suffered. And until recently, a majority of that suffering has been in silence. One last quote that resonated with me was, I think Beaver is a very clicky school. On the girls' varsity soccer team, there have definitely been times where I felt out of place and uncomfortable. Lower classmen making me feel unwelcome on my own team. This resonated with me a lot because being a person of color and being an athlete, there have been times where I was one of a few or the only person of color on my basketball team and feeling out of place or feeling like I can't truly be myself without being judged. Luckily, now I'm on a very diverse team, surrounded by great teammates and we all accept each other. Being new to Beaver, I don't have any personal experience of being discriminated against, but being able to be a voice and a beacon for students and faculty to express their stories allows me to fully understand the problems at Beaver and to hopefully help be part of the solution. Circling back to what Brian Stevenson said, truth is necessary. The experiences of BIPOC students at Beaver are representative of the experiences of BIPOC students and PWIs all around the US. There's a reason I'm giving this talk at a youthful, predominantly white institution. It all starts with educating the youth. Besides starting the Equal Justice Initiative, Brian Stevenson is probably best known for the unforgettable case of Walter McMillan, who was convicted and sentenced to death for a crime he did not commit. Brian Stevenson was McMillan's lawyer and set him free. This story may also sound familiar because a movie was made about him in his story called Just Mercy, starring Michael B. Jordan as Stevenson and Jamie Foxx as McMillan. As Brian Stevenson works with the Equal Justice Initiative, I am a part of Black Student Union at Beaver. Both of mine and Brian Stevenson's work are both intersectional because we are both striving for permanent and prominent change. Creating real change is not an easy thing, but we are the change. We are the next generation and we are the future. Think of us as the blank canvas for an educated, prominent society. The very beginning of real change all starts with the want to change which is arguably the hardest part. Accepting and voicing that there is discrimination and privilege at Beaver and in the world. Then the acknowledgement comes from the education and knowledge about it, which is why I am here giving this talk. I encourage you to realize that this is necessary and to do your own research and that change can start here at Beaver or any institution. I want to emphasize this. I'm not trying to tell anyone what to do or how to live their life. All I'm trying to do is give you the resources and facts of what you can do to help be part of the change. I want to leave you all with one last quote. We as young people today have to take action in order for history not to repeat itself. Thank you.